welcome to a Key Smash Studios tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be covering how to change the speed of your surroundings temporarily through Unity's time class properties. As you can see, I'm starting off with a base. This base is similar to the end of our character controller tutorial, but the only scripting that is already done is the horizontal movement for my character. So if you already have your own movement, you're good. If you need movement, the link to our tutorial will be in the description down below. As you're watching, if you find this video helpful, please remember to like and subscribe. Go ahead and begin. I'm going to create a new script and I'm going to name it slow motion. So I'm going to do two main things inside this script. And the first one is going to be giving our time scale a default. And then the second thing is going to be allowing our player to change the time scale. So I'm going to go ahead and inside start do time dot time scale equals one. And time scale is just the scale that Unity uses for the passage of time. In this case, one is the default speed, zero would be paused speed, and anything in between will slow down our time. So we're going to go ahead and slow down our time inside update. So I'm going to use the input of Q to slow down my time when pressed, and then put my time back to the default of one once released. So I'm going to do if input dot get key down, key code, dot q and then inside this i'm just going to say time dot time scale equals 0.2f and then we'll go ahead and do our else if for whenever the button's released so we'll do get key up key code q as well and then inside this we'll do time dot time scale is back to the default scale of one and this is all we'll be doing inside this script. And all we're doing here is making sure that in the beginning, our scale is set to the default of one, which is saying that we want it to be at the regular speed. And then we're saying if the user has clicked Q, then they want it to go down to slow motion, which sets the time scale to a point two. And then once they've released the button, we want the time scale to go back to its normal scale of one. So now we're gonna go ahead and go back to the scene. And I'm gonna go to art and drag in an orb. I'm going to do 0 0.2, 0 0.2, and then I'm going to put a script on it that I'm going to name Orb Motion. And the whole purpose of this orb is to translate above the player's head so that we can see the changes and speeds of what would be our surroundings for reference. So now I'll go ahead and open this script. And we'll give it one variable, which will be a private int called speed. And then we'll give this speed a default of six inside our start. And then inside of update, we're just going to be translating it between a point A and a point B. And for this example, our point A will be a positive seven and our point B will be a negative seven. So what we want to do inside our update is just see if we've passed one of those points. And if we have, we want to switch the direction of the orb in the opposite direction. So that way it indefinitely goes between those two points. So we're going to go ahead and say if transform.position.x is greater than seven. Then we want to change our speed to negative six, so that way it goes back towards the left. Then we'll go ahead and do our else if, which will be if our transform.position.x is less than negative seven. And if this is the case, then we're gonna do a speed of six. And then finally, we'll go ahead and give it its movement. So we'll do transform.translate. And then the vector that we're gonna give it in the x direction will be time, dot delta time, time speed, and then we'll just do zero and zero in the other two directions. I really want to point out the importance of having the time dot delta time. Having this allows us to slow down and speed up our surroundings based on our current time scale. All time dot delta time is saying is the current time in seconds since the last frame dependent on our current time scale. So you need to make sure that you multiply the movement of anything you want slowed down by the time dot delta time. So this is all that we'll be doing for our orb motion. So we can go ahead and go back to our scene. I'm going to go ahead and go to our character and I'm going to attach our slow motion script. And now if I click play, 
you can see that the orb moves, and if I click Q, the orb slows down. But currently our player also still slows down, so we'll need to go into our character controller script and adjust that. If you have your own character controller script, just make sure that you go to the portion of your script that has the movement vector. So we'll go ahead and do that, and we'll go over to our movement script. And this portion right here is my moving vector. So what I want to make sure is that for objects that I don't want to be affected by the time scale, I want to change where it has time dot delta time and multiply it by an unscaled delta time. So we'll go ahead and do that for our character. Unscaled delta time is similar to delta time in that it gives you the time in seconds since the last frame. However, with unscaled delta time, it's independent of the time scale effects, so our character will continue at the base speed as though our time scale was 1, while all of our other objects that are multiplied by delta time will go at the slower speed of our time scale. So this is all that we're doing in our character movements. We can go ahead and save and go back to the scene and click play one last time. Now you can see again, if I hold Q, it slows down my orb, but my player continues at the same speed. So when I release Q, my player's still going and my orb speeds back up. And when I press Q, it doesn't affect my player. So just as a recap, we adjusted our time scale and then multiplied the movement of our surroundings by delta time. So that way their movement would take into consideration our new time scale. But then we used our unscaled delta time on our player. So that way it would continue moving at its original speed. I would like to point out if you use time scale to pause your game, in other words, you set time scale to zero so that way your player can't interact with the scene while the game is paused, then your player will still be able to move if you use the unscaled delta time. So if this is the case for you, you just wanna make sure that you put an if statement around your unscaled delta time code saying if the time scale is zero, still don't move. And this will allow you to still do time scale equals zero and pause your game without allowing your player to continue moving. As always, I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments, or you can join our Discord and ask them there. The link for that will be in the description below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.